This video will take you through the main steps involved with placing a peripherally inserted central catheter using ECG guidance. Thorough patient assessment prior to any vascular access procedure is necessary to select the most appropriate central venous access device for your patient and highlight potential procedural issues or contraindications to insertion. The most relevant considerations may include the urgency of the CVAD request, has written informed consent been obtained, the patient's current and past medical history, including allergies, the intended treatment plan, including the reason for the CVAD request and type and duration of IV therapy, is the patient currently anticoagulated or have any cause for increased bleeding? Does the patient have a history of problematic CVAD insertions or require up-to-date vein mapping? And escalation to an interventional radiology service could be considered. Are there other issues which could affect insertion, such as the presence of a permanent pacemaker or ICD, enlarged body habitus, respiratory or cardiac compromise, or transmissible infections? And some anxious or needle phobic patients may benefit from an anxiolytic prior to insertion. Check the patient's ID, explain the procedure and answer any outstanding questions the patient may have. Where possible, position the patient with slight elevation of the bed head, with the arm perpendicular to the body and supported comfortably. Typically the right arm is used, but either can be used based on vein suitability. Ultrasound assessment of the upper arm vessels prior to the procedure will allow for optimal vein selection. Ultrasound should be performed the full length of the upper arm. The ideal insertion site is the middle third of the upper arm, away from points of flexion, such as the cubital fossa, or areas of moisture and high bacterial growth, such as the axilla. The most frequently chosen vessel for pick insertion is the basilic vein, due to its typically large diameter, direct pathway to the superior vena cava, and is usually more distant from neighbouring arteries and nerves. The brachial vein or veins are usually found in a neurovascular bundle within the brachial artery and median nerve. This can make insertion more challenging, but it is not a contraindication to selection. The cephalic vein is usually the smallest in diameter and can join the axillary vein at an angle, making pick advancement difficult. This ultrasound view shows the basilic vein on the right and brachial artery and veins on the left. Note the artery is seen to be pulsatile and non-compressible under pressure, whereas the veins can be compressed. Both in and out of plane approaches are viable options for ultrasound technique. However, it should be noted that in plane technique does not allow for visualisation of surrounding structures such as nerves and arteries. Measuring the patient for internal pick length can be performed by beginning at the intended insertion site, tracking up the shoulder, across to the sternal notch, then palpating down to the third or fourth intercostal space. The patient should be attached to the ECG monitoring to provide a baseline or surface ECG trace. Lead 2 will provide the clearest P wave. Next, a Y-shaped chest plate should be applied high up over the sternal notch. This allows for detection of the pick as it advances to the cavoatrial junction through the chest. This will be demonstrated later. Connection of the ECG leads to the chest plate allows for communication with the monitor. A surgical scrub should be performed and personal protective equipment including a hat, face mask, eye protection, full length sterile gown and gloves should be worn.
Next, the patient's skin should be prepped using antiseptic for at least 30 seconds and allowed to dry. Alcoholic chlorhexidine has been found to be highly effective in reducing central line associated bloodstream infections. Here we are using a sterile applicator to avoid free pour solutions and reduce the risk of inadvertent injection. If chlorhexidine allergy exists, alternate solutions such as povidone iodine can be used. Full length drapes should be applied to provide maximal barrier precautions and ensure proper sterile technique is followed. A tract of local anaesthetic should be applied using ultrasound, infiltrating from the vessel edge towards the skin, producing a wheel at the surface. Next, access to the vessel is obtained under ultrasound using a modified Seldinger technique. On the left of the screen, we are using an outer plane technique and on the right, for demonstration purposes, you can see an in-plane approach. You can use either. Once access is obtained, the guide wire can be advanced into the vessel. The cannula is then removed in preparation for dilation. Consider infiltration of further local anaesthetic if required. Place the dilator over the wire and advance through the skin, applying skin traction distally to the insertion site using your non-dominant hand. Hold the dilator close to the skin to avoid bending it. A twisting motion can be used. Advance to the hilt and check for free movement of the wire. This will indicate the wire and dilator are in alignment in the vessel. You can remove the wire at this stage and occlude the dilator to reduce the risk of air embolism. At this point, some procedurists may choose to remove an outer pair of sterile gloves to reduce the risk of contaminating the sterile pick. To avoid excessive external pick length, which can be difficult to dress and maintain, consideration should be given to trimming the pick to the pre-measured length. The pick's design features and instructions for use will dictate if this is possible. Ensure the stiffening wire is pulled back sufficiently prior to cutting the pick to avoid cutting the wire.
reinsert the wire so that it correlates with the new length of the pick. Here, the inserter kinks the wire so that any movement of the wire can be detected later. Prime the pick with saline. Next, the pick wire is attached to the chest plate by puncturing the sterile drape with an enclosed metal spike. This then allows the system to detect the upcoming intravascular ECG. The inner part of the introducer should be removed prior to advancing the pick a short way into the vessel. You should begin to see an intravascular ECG seen here in yellow. This ECG is generated via an electrode on the end of the wire within the pick. This image outlines what we hope to see on the intravascular ECG as the pick is advanced. If the P wave is generated by the sinoatrial node, which is found high up on the right atrial wall, we can utilise this to locate the cavoatrial junction. As the pick approaches the sinoatrial node, an increase in the amplitude of the P wave is noted. This will reach a maximum amplitude at cavoatrial junction. Once the pick is advanced into the proximal right atrium, one of two things can happen. Either the P wave then begins to reduce in amplitude, or negative deflection can be identified at the start of the P wave. At this point, the pick should be withdrawn to maximum P wave with no negative deflection seen. This signifies cavoatrial junction. Here we have this occurring with the useful addition of tip tracking. The shape of the chest plate is demonstrated on screen and the pathway of the pick is shown as a yellow ball. This gives real-time feedback to the procedure list of any malpositions. Once cavoatrial junction is indicated by the peaked P wave, note the external length of the skin. The introducer may need to be split and removed at this point if not already done so. The pick will need to be re-advanced into the skin at this point. If you have any issues interpreting the ECG output or flushing and aspirating the line, a chest x-ray should be performed to confirm tip location. Remove the wire, replace with a needleless connector, flush and aspirate each lumen with normal saline. Secure the pick to the skin using a sutureless securement device. Cover with a chlorhexidine impregnated dressing. And provide the patient with relevant aftercare instructions. Document the procedure in the patient's progress notes and that the pick is ready for use.